Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be making a start at the very least on my review of The Giant Horse of Oz by Ruth Plumley Thompson. So this is book number 22 in the Wizard of Oz series. As always, I'm going to read you the blurb, then I'm going to go through and check out some of my tabs, and then I'll share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. So, Dane reads The Giant Horse of Oz in which the Scarecrow, Tiny Trot from California, and Benny, a living stone statue from Boston, encounter High Boy, whose telescopic legs and airy personality make him in every way the giant horse of Oz. High Boy himself is on an expedition with Herbie the Medicine Man, and little Prince Philidor of the spectacular Azure Isles, whose home has been threatened with utter destruction by a terrifying monster sea serpent. They all come together in a thrilling episode of Ozian history, which includes the discovery of the enchanted past of the wonderful Good Witch of the North, the very first person Dorothy met when she arrived from Kansas, many years before. I love that we've got the high boy and Herbie the medicine man. It sounds like it's going to be a stoner read. Unfortunately, it was not. So we learn that Cl uh, Quiberon has never molested the keepers of his cavern. I suppose that's a good thing. And we get this great little line. Um, we who are magically constructed can be destroyed without pain, but a mortal can be hurt and no one shall ever suffer to save me or my kingdom. Then we must perish, I suppose. Pushing his specs high up on his forehead, Toddledy looked resignedly at the king. It might be quite restful to be destroyed. I don't like the use of resignedly though. Never a fan of adverbs. We get a great ex expression. Merciful mackerel! Um, and then we get a reference to, uh, the, the basically it breaks third person and suddenly becomes first person and the narrate, narrator says, oh I never know if he actually made it to the wedding, which just annoys me. And so basically this giant statue gets turned into like a living statue and he meets the scarecrow and he says, uh, does the wizard live there too? And do you think he could change me to a real person? Of course, but if I were you, I should stay as you are. There are lots of real people, but precious few stone ones. Think of the advantages. Tapping Benny lightly on the chest, the scarecrow began to enumerate them. First of all, he explained merrily, you will never tire, need food, or suffer pain. You will never wear out nor require clothes. Why, well, you have all the advantages of life without any of its inconveniences. Isn't that true, Trot? And Trot's like, mm. That was my attempt to do a gesture that could mean yes or no. And then we get the great line, get away from here, you wild wankers. I don't know what that's supposed to mean, but I know what it means in my head. And then they need some rocks to get into uh, through this door, and the scarecrow thinks, "Why we can rock with laughter," which is very Oz. Um, yeah, and then we get that they meet a dragon. It's a very amiable dragon. For Agnes had never devoured any captive maidens, burned down a village, or threatened a kingdom. She was a small, cosy sort of a dragon too, taking up only about half a room and wearing rubbers to keep her claws from scratching the floor. I think that's very considerate. So the high horse almost tramples everyone, and the scarecrow yells, "Hey!" And then the horse goes, where? Did you say hey? Ah, leaning forward, he snatched several wisps out of the scarecrow's shirt front and munched them up with great relish. Oh, and they go past Ginger's house and Scarecrow says, she'd have given you some fine gingerbread too. Very nice. Ginger was actually one of my favorite characters. Oh yeah, so then High Boy, uh, the horse, goes to 200 feet tall and then carefully steps down into the river. Um, and it's pretty much like Trot who's on the horse's back. The toes of her shoes touch the water. That is a deep ass river. So 200 feet, I, I figured that out. That's over twice as deep as the Thames is. Someone laughingly accepts someone's apologies. You know my feeling about adverbs by this point. Oh, and Herbie's got some keep awake pills, which I could do with them. I mean, I suppose coffee is essentially the same thing, but you know. But yeah, The Giant Horse of Oz by Ruth Plumley Thompson. I mean, I'm enjoying reading the Oz series so far. This is book number 22. They're very much same of a sameness at this point. This one was a little longer than previous ones, so I guess that was nice in that there was more to get stuck into. I, I don't know what to tell you, man. It was all right. 3.5 out of 5. So there we have it. That's what I made of The Giant Horse of Oz by Ruth Plumley Thompson. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read this book and if so, what you thought of it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.